Well, you got his statement. Mm -hmm. What'd he say? He said you had sex with him. Oh, you're shitting me. Four or five times. Where? Uh, I don't know all the details because I was skimming through all the stuff. And when I came to his... You're kidding me. Mm -mm. That's what he's claiming. <sighs> That's what he's claiming. <laughs> Oh my god. Everybody goodness. wants a piece of you. Jesus Christ. Or everybody claims to have a piece of you. One of the two. <laughs> and you have a statement? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we copied it. Send me a copy of that statement. Yeah. I'm dying to see that. I'll, I'll get it tomorrow. Was it a short statement, a long statement? About a page and a half. Okay. Handwritten. Handwritten? Okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't indicate where this great love affair took place. Yeah, but uh, Mike, I cannot remember it. So. Rather know now than later. I'll say. God, I'll say for sure. So I talked to Dave about Dennis, and we're going to rethink. We're going to digest the statements and then rethink as to how to approach it. Okay. All right. Jesus. All right. <laughs>
his barriers increase. His blink rate is up and he breaks eye contact to the right. He's not breaking eye contact to access information. He's breaking eye contact to get away as if he's running. There's no contempt for this in his face whatsoever. And to your point, Chase, I think anytime someone is fishing to see how much you know and not just saying that didn't happen, that's easy that person you should be paying attention to. Now you'll also see, and you're gonna find this through the video, his request for approval is brow up in that shrill voice as that thing happens. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so first of all, just no denial, just as you said there, Greg, right from moment one, you'd either go, well, that just didn't happen. There's no denial. And then as you say, he starts fishing. It's quite comic, uh, ultimately. It's hard not to laugh throughout of that. It's like a strange piece of, to me, amateur dramatics going on. And here's why. The way he goes fishing for information about what might be in this statement is he kind of uses the Chris Voss technique of interrogation, which is just to repeat uh, an element of what's been said before. So there's this idea of, you know, there's a, there's a handwritten statement. A statement? You know, and then a little more said about it. I'd like to get hold of that statement. And because we get this repetition of things said, we actually get comedic dialogue. It's, it's, it's why it starts sounding like an episode of Seinfeld, because essentially, if you look at Seinfeld, all it does is to take something that somebody just said before and repeat it with a slightly different intonation on it, which again is, is the Chris Voss way of interrogating somebody. Not that there's anything wrong with any of that, Probably a great interrogation technique uh, or, or informational technique. Great way to create comedy. But that put together with these two, uh, you know, performers in this strange piece of amateur dramatics, it feels like they've had a number of takes at this one to to an extent. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but very odd. What what uh, most comes to mind for me is the tone change on where it took place. There's a whole different show, tone. The comedic level disappears, and now there's a deep tone there. Send me a copy of that statement. I'm dying to see that. He didn't indicate where this great love affair took place. My guess is is that there's, there's a worry that if it took place in a certain area, a certain location, there may be evidence around that and he wants to know do we has he said where this took place because if it takes place in a certain place i'm gonna have to really create a good story around this one to get out of it there that's what i got around that hey, scott let me add one let me add one thing back to you mark mm -hmm. before we end it scott one of the things that i should have mentioned he is keenly aware of the camera here whereas in other parts of this he's telling a story and he doesn't have that when you're confronted with something whether it's a front first time or not and you're keenly aware of the camera that can raise fight or flight in its own way so that's something for us to pay, pay attention to as well as we go through this whole thing so yeah. sorry and i'll hand it back to you yeah so you're what you're, what you're talking about greg is extra face it's a, it's a term i coined when you see extras in movies and tv shows they're sitting yep. around like this eyebrows up and just act like nothing's going on and when they talk their their illustrators are really really big and they're not they're told not to make any noise as they talk so it's really big if you'll watch the kardashians everybody in that show who's not like one of the stars of the show sitting around whether they're in a restaurant or whether one of their friends on the couch it's going <laughs> and that's extra face because you know you're being on you're you're on film you're being you're being videoed at that point so you're trying to put the best part of you forward and that's the face they make now when he hits this mickey mouse voice where you're kidding me that's that i agree with you chase unbelievable that is just that is i've never seen that before never heard that before anywhere else to, to that level th than here but when he says when he uses the explicative what happens is his chin comes down as he's saying that because he's starting he's starting to go oh no they know you know they know and mark to your point when he's the thing of the story he's got to make up he needs more information he doesn't know how you know, like chase said he doesn't know how much information they have up to this point but he's wondering which time is this guy talking about is he talking about all the times or is he talking about one single time? Because what he's in now is what Greg was talking about earlier when he's in, when he's trying to, to get, he's in defend. So what he's done in the liar's loop is he's already, he's already pitched. Pitching is where you actually tell the lie, but he's been triggered by him saying, here's this information. And as he gathers this information, he's thinking, I have to, I have to come up with something. And then he's deconflicting as he goes along, but he's got to know what he needs to deconflict before he starts giving anything out. That's why he's really not saying a whole lot other than I want to see that information. Not a whole lot of details about anything. He's backed off because he's thinking, I got to collect information. I got to get as much information. And Mark, what you're talking about is elicitation. 
those are the techniques that that Chris uses that, that he's talking about in his book. So it's he's 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 using a listation. He doesn't realize he's doing it, but he's using a listation techniques uh, to get as much information as he possibly can. It's just a natural one. Obviously, he's done since he's not doesn't know or he may know. But I don't think so at this point. So that's where he is. He's trying to, to get enough information so he'll know what to defend as he goes back in. All right, that's what I got. We good. One thing, oh, Chase. In this instance, in most crimes, probably ninety percent. I made that up. But let's just go with it. In most crimes, the person doesn't know how much you know. And especially as a police officer doing an interrogation, this video, when you watch this video back again, now think of how and why the bait question is so deadly effective. That question that starts with, is there any reason that X, Y, and Z would have seen you do this or one of your neighbors would have reported this? That question is, in my opinion, one of the most probably top three interrogation techniques in the world. The bait. It, it separates senior interrogators from junior people who come in and blast out information that's not true and let you know they don't know anything to start with. Right. It's the ask versus the tell. Yep. I always add whatsoever. Is there any reason whatsoever? Because that, that takes it to the wall. Is there any possibility at all when you go through there? And when you start talking about DNA, you know, it'd be a reason that your DNA would be in that room. Yeah. And they start you and you say stuff like, you know, like your hair, your eyelashes, some spit when you were talking, like you'd be able to find spit when they're talking. And those eyes will get all big and they'll start listening. So, that, yeah, so that's a, that's a potent tool there. Well, you got his statement. Mm -hmm. What did he say? He said you had sex with him. Oh, you're shitting me. Four or five times. Where? Uh, I don't know all the details because I was skimming through all the stuff. And when I came to his. You're kidding me. Mm -mm. That's what he's claiming. That's what he's claiming. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody wants a piece of you. Jesus Christ. Or everybody claims to have a piece of you. One of the two. <laughs> you have a statement? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we copy it. Send me a copy of that statement. Yeah. I'm dying to see that. I'll, I'll get it tomorrow. Was it a short statement, a long statement? About a page and a half. Okay. Handwritten. Handwritten? Okay. He didn't indicate where this great love affair took place. Yeah, but uh, Mike, I cannot remember it. So. Rather know now than later. I'll say. God, I'll say for sure. So I talked to Dave about Dennis, and we're going to rethink. We're going to digest the statements and then rethink as to how to approach it. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.